Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Yeah. In Thornton the Dale, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 the ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's finding it. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. On sale this week. Genuine 1987 Ford Sierra Cosworth. They are absolutely like a lethal weapon. We've got the teardrop caravan. I think it's six berth, this one. I'm not too sure. It's... This would be good for David and Paul on a long job. Yeah, yeah, would they love that, wouldn't they? They would really enjoy that, keeping there together. Derek's got a lot of cars. There is babies. You can't keep them all, um, and I think it comes to a stage in life when you've just got to bite the bullet occasionally and realise that you've got to move some things on. He has another affair with all his vehicles. He loves them all. They've all got a little place in his heart, so that's great. It shows that Derek does actually have a heart. It's, uh, it's the one, the 1982 Ford Capri, last time looking around 11,600. Matthewson sells dozens of rare and desirable sports cars. GT6, the Mark 1, 1998 Boxster, BMW the Z3M. This month, a beast from the 80s is said to cause a stir in the showroom. It was bought by Jack the Lance. It was bought by lads who wanted a bit of flat. You could have Porsche performance at half the cost. A rocket ship on wheels. A working man's supercar, the Sierra Cosworth. Ford man Dave loves it. They put that lump in the front, which had a humongous tuning potential, and then the rest is history, off they went. So if you could afford one, you bought one. Only 5,000 Whaletail Cosworths were made. It was as loud as 80s Essex could get. With a Garrett turbocharger and twin fuel injectors in each cylinder, it was a race car on the road, topping out at 153 miles an hour. Car thieves targeted the Cosy, knowing they could probably outrun the law in their rovers and escorts. The police levelled the playing field by buying their own Cosworths. But here's the thing. In the 80s, a new one cost 20,000. In the 90s, you could get one for under 10. Recently, a near perfect limited edition RS500 went for 122,000 pounds. In the Matthewson's garage, one of the chosen few left is up for grabs. It's a real genuine car, a real honest car. What you see is what you get which is what Ford guys like. Just about all of them were messed about with. You know, people made them how they wanted them, you know, from cosmetic changes, you know, gear knob changes, radio changes, holes cutting doors for speakers, white dial kits. And then that's before you start moving on to wheels and engine modifications and all sorts of upgrades, which is great, but you, not many people want, want that. You know, there's more people want a standard unmolested car by far. 
The car's being sold by Doug Hodgson. Ironically, a former bomb disposal expert. It wants somebody who is going to restore it and then drive it and probably frighten themselves to death with it. The Cosworth isn't roadworthy, has 99,000 on the clock and has been in storage for 15 years. But Doug is asking big money for it. It's something and out in the trade to sort this car out. A bit of superficial rust, but nothing that would worry me if I was younger. Body works pretty good apart from it wants a couple of inner wings, a couple of front wings. I have driven one of these and uh, they are very enjoyable. But yeah, they're so fast. Well, they're a racing engine, so uh, and that wheel tail there isn't there just for fun. That wheel tail is for downforce because they are absolutely like a lethal weapon. Another day, another dollar. And Derek's off to see one of his regular suppliers. The next call we're going to make is uh, with Melvin. Um, he's a very well-known York businessman uh, in removals. By the nature of his job, I suppose, his business, he, uh, he comes across quite a bit of memorabilia, automobilia. Something very unusual awaits. The little teardrop caravan, really nice, lovely condition, that um, is, it, it would seem he's had painted the same colour as his trike. He has a, the biggest trike you've ever seen, a massive, great thing. Melvin, like his memorabilia, is an acquired taste. Yeah, he's a rough diamond. He's been about and he knows the, knows the score. And he's one of them guys that's much, much better for knowing. You've got to know him before you appreciate him. I can play this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> cool nerve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my word. Yeah. Where is she? I'm down there, that's it. There she is, mate. Gramophone. Wind up gramophone. Look at that. Absolutely lovely. There she goes. 70s specialist magazines included. It's kind of tricky to see why Derek's taking all this stuff. 35 quid. Yeah, I was going to say it'd do 25, 30, wouldn't it? Oh, that's good. I don't think you want them legging things, they. Yeah, 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 yeah. spats, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting old. Who's getting old? But it draws customers in. And car buyers in the mood for spending can't get enough of it. These are popular, but yeah. uh, guys use them in the workshop side lamps or whatever you want to call I don't know. But they're very, very popular. There's two or three of them, aren't there, in here? But what Derek's really here to see is the teardrop caravan. Well, I bought it for the back of my trike. We used it once or twice. Wife doesn't like it. It's a little bit small, a bit, a bit claustrophobic. So I've decided to sell it and see if I can buy a bigger one, really. Oh, she's nice and light, isn't she? <laughs> Last one we sold, whilst it was maybe a weeny bit bigger than that, it wouldn't be much, but it wasn't the stylish. That's a proper teardrop I know. caravan. This one was based on a teardrop, but it weren't quite as teardrop, if you like. I can't think of any other way to put it. It was yeah. a bit more slabby, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. With tiny windows. It weren't as stylish. You know, it was all right, but it was lovely condition, brand new, but it weren't as stylish, so I think it'll romp 1,500 quid, personally. Yeah. I think it will. Are we having that sign, mate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. we put it in here, shall we? Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because it's getting a bit full up in there. You hold that up. Nice sign, that. Do you want to put the wheelbarrow in there as well? No, 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 we'll put it in the van, shall we? Let's hope they call Melvin, whoever buys it. Yeah. <laughs> hope so. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's got every chance. I think this it's great. Be good for David and Paul on a long job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, would they? Love that, wouldn't they? They would really enjoy that, keeping there together, the pair of them. A cosy caravan with a reserve of 1,500. Derek loves it. We'll see if the punters agree when the hammer comes down. Cosworths came in three colours. White, black and moonstone blue. Enthusiasts Paul, Mark and Dave have the complete set. They're an iconic car. Obviously, in the 80s, when these were, when these came out and were produced, there was nothing else like it on the road. You were buying supercar performance for a working man's budget. All totally standard. It had most of its original parts on it when I when I did buy it. Um, in the youth, I did put a stainless exhaust on it, 
um, but now it's all back to its original exhaust, just as it would leave the factory in Moonstone Blue. Uh, I've owned this car a year to the day. Uh, done nothing with it, just parked it in the garage, and that's about it, really. Just always liked them ever since I was a kid. It's this car to have when I grew up. It was, I don't know, for want of a better word, council estate supercar at the time, weren't it? So just always liked them, liked the look of them, liked the wheel tail, nice car. News of an unrestored Cosworth at Matthewson's has piqued their interest. It's gone quite bad on inner wings at both sides. I think uh, seat's got a bit of driver's wear on, on the driver's side. Passenger seat's remarkably good. Only on cloth, though. The rest of it feels fairly good. What's headlining like? Paul Linfoot is the Cosworth expert. He also restores them. It's very, very original, though, isn't it? Everything yeah, is there. It's all, uh... all the original bits are still intact, which is a bonus. And may bid for it. Normally, we spend hours and hours on the internet, eBay, wherever, trying to source original yeah. parts for the restorations. So although it's, um, it needs a lot of uh, repairs and a lot of work, a lot of our time is saved for the fact that it is original and all there. The body shell's a big problem. We've got quite a lot of welding work to do at the front. In its current state, Paul reckons it's worth 13,000, way short of what the owner wants. We often say we're only gonna pay X amount, but on the day, you know, your heart takes over and quite often you do pay too much, but, the good thing with these cars at the moment is they're very much in demand and obviously if it's re restored to a high standard and looks good, it, it could be worth quite a lot of money once finished and done properly. It's auction day and the Yorkshire heavens have opened. It's the snow and ice that put people off, really. Most of us just put a coat and hat on, don't we, when it starts a bit of rain, bring, the, bring out the brollies. Uh, so, uh, fingers crossed, this'll do. Look, the sky's bluing up now, it's brightening up a bit, so it'll be all right. Over there, look, behind you. <laughs> Blue sky of Rydale. Oh, well, that'll have them flocking out, won't it? If only they all knew. If only they knew. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Gonna put a bit in. No, no, I've no money. I've just bought an escort, so I've no money. <laughs> but it's certainly a project. It's going to be at least probably 10, 10 grand to get it back. Had a lot of hours. It's a nice motor, though. I remember when I was younger, I paid £3,800 for a Sapphire Cosworth. Not a bad car. I ran it around for a bit and I sold it for £3,800. But them days are long gone, aren't they? 1987 Ford Sierra Cosworth, heck of a car. Got the makings of a lovely car. Genuine, want some work, we know. Owner Doug's here to see the Cosy go. Whereabouts gonna be? Whereabouts on this? I've got 15 here, 15, 16, 17, 17, 17, 18, 18, 18,000, 250, 18, 250, 18, 5, 18,005, 18, 5, and you're out, I'm submitting 18,500. 18.5, submitting. 18.5. Bit short, but just enough. I'm a Yorkshireman, so I'm never happy with the amount of money that I deal with deals, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, it'll sort of put a bit of jam on the bread as well as butter. Coming up, the Cozzy's long road to restoration begins. I liked the idea when we heard that we were coming down that we were going to be working on a Cosworth, because you know, it's, sort of like, it's an 80s guy and I'm an 80s guy, so... At Matthewson's, up to 200 cars come and go each month. 4650 sold. The problem is we've got too many vehicles. Space is always in short supply. To make room, Derek has made a difficult decision to sell some of his own cars. Yeah, there is babies. It's definitely a hoarder. He doesn't like letting go. He'll be reluctantly parting with this 1946 Jaguar Mark IV and a low mileage 1938 Austin 12 Ascot, including its valuable number plate. You can't keep them all. Um, and I think it comes to a stage in life when You've just got to bite the bullet occasionally and realise that you've got to move some things on. 
Dave and Paul have been dispatched to pick them up from storage. Father isn't too enthusiastic, really. Uh, he loves his toys. The trouble is with our job, we, we've got so many coming through all the time. If he wants to go home in a classic tonight, he's got a choice, hasn't he? You know, if he fancies going home topless, then he can jump in his Triumph Roadster. If he wants to go home in a saloon car, he's got his whatever he might be. You know, he's got loads. He doesn't need all these as well. It's painful on a sort of fry your head basis because you've just got so much stuff kicking about. It becomes a bit of a monster, really. First, the jack. It's not had a good run in a while. He's not playing ball. Some weeks, of course, everything you go to just starts, doesn't it? Give her a squirt. All right. All right. The expert diagnosis, it won't start. The fuel's evaporated, the valves in the pump aren't shutting off, so, so the pump's going backwards and forwards and just moving the same block of air backwards and forwards all the time, you know. Eventually, the jag is brought back to life. Next, a very original Austin 12, as in horsepower, with a number plate that's worth a few thousand. If you go to a show next week, you can see two or three of them, can't you? But you won't see one with one family from new and unmolested. That's the difference. This one is also temporarily mechanically challenged. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit more. Work, work. It's the day before the auction. Derek's preparing the village hall for the auto memorabilia sale. That's a nice sign. That is a lovely old sign, look. That is, I mean, again, it's not tremendously old, but it's nice, isn't it? It's nicely aged. On sale, a selection of genuine enamel garage signs. That's not 20-year-old, uh, but that one's 1950s. And some reproductions. Wall fillers, we call them, don't we? And they are, they're exactly that. I mean, they're for nothing. They're grand little signs. 15, 18, 24 quid, stuff like that. If you just want to create a bit of atmosphere and fill up your, your workshop, these are the things. These here, cheap and cheerful signs, are brilliant. In fact, he should have been a forger. He made a lot more money. But the star buy this month, the 1950s road map Derek picked up from Melvin with the teardrop caravan. Absolutely superb, absolutely genuine. Absolutely. Start. Look at that, mower miles per shilling. Now, does that date it or does that not? And no motorways, wonderful. Oh, in them days when we had no motorways, eh? And every town was chock-a-block and congested to the eyeballs. But uh, once that goes into a collection, every single person that walks in there and sees that will remark on that sign. There's something about it, it just hits you. Uh, very nice and bright, lovely condition. You know, one or two bits and pieces of ageing, but, I mean, that's obvious. I think it'll go through the roof. You know, it, 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 will, it will at least four, and wouldn't surprise me if it achieves seven. Back in the showroom... Don't try and get in it until it's up on something. It'll all go wrong. Yeah, no. Are you sure that goes that way? Yeah. Yeah. 100%? Yeah, Sarah's this side. Sarah's taken a shine to the teardrop caravan. Oh, I love this. It's fabulous. It's uh, It can get two people in, At if least. you're interested. At least. You know, I reckon we could get more in, do you, Paul? I reckon mean, you get four in there. I reckon yeah. two of us could have a nice time in there. Yeah, I reckon we could, mm. yeah. You did, you did mean me and you, did you? Of course. Mm. Oh, look, you see, what am I, like, five Brilliant. foot ten? There you go. That's, that'll, <laughs> keep, that'll keep her quiet. Hey! There you go. All right, campers. <laughs> this would get a lot of use. Camping weekend for two. Romantic. Look how romantic this is. You've got to be close, mm. haven't you? You've got to know the person quite well. There's no facilities. This is it. Proper camping at its best. I'd like to buy it. I would. But Sarah might have some competition. You'd think it's going to be 
the outdoorsy type, maybe a little bit of a hippie, but I reckon we could be surprised. I reckon there's some collectors out there for items like this. Could go for some good money. A rare and pristine classic has arrived at the garage. Stan Smith is a highly trained mechanic and this is his 1966 Sunbeam Rapier Series 5. Watch the front number plate and tell me that it's all right because it's very low. <sighs> Stan never stops renovating cars. This one is number 52. I enjoy restoring them I, and move on them a little while, most of them, and then pass them on. That one I specifically bought to, uh, to bring up here because we like Derek so much that we, we love him taking money off us. <laughs> Is he good at that? Oh, aye. <laughs> yes, he's, uh, I mean, he's a genuine Southern Yorkshireman. <laughs> This was Stan Sunbeam just two months ago. Major bodywork, really, wings, sills, door bottoms, door tops, roof. We're three quarters through it, I would think, at the moment. We still have the brakes to do. Um, engine's been rebuilt, that's there. To go back in, new clutch in it. In other words, a full rebuild. Usually a daunting process. I've done it all my life, so... Uh, I don't see it as a problem at all. When we do this one and we'll go on to the next one. When I left school and went into the motor trade, these were the cars that we sold new in 1965. So I know them pretty much inside out. The rapier was twice the price of a Cortina at £1,200. It was a GT for the rakish exec. Good car in its day, 1965, all synced from S gearbox, disc brakes, overdrive. There are some good reasons why this car is now very rare. Like everything in the 60s, they weren't under seal, they had no rust protection. They tended to fall to pieces. Did they sell in the hundreds of thousands? Or? No, no. But the Sunbeam Rapier's day has finally arrived. Now they're in high demand. Nicely repainted with um, probably put a set of alloy wheels on it. I would hope it would make between seven and eight thousand pounds. He's very good at Stan, he knows his job, he's been in the business all his life. So he knows his stuff, he's no fool. And he knows how to turn out a car. And there it is. Very, very good. Everyone we've had off him has been extremely good. Everyone we've had has sold better than we thought it would sell. Um, and it's all down to presentation. The interior is to die for. Really, really pleased with that. I wish it were a convertible. And we could then be talking about 12, 15,000. Uh, as a saloon, I think pushing up towards 10. For Stan, though, there is a downside to renovating classics like this to such a high standard. Oh, Stan doesn't do it for a profit, absolutely. No, if he worked out what he spent on it and in materials and such like and what have you, he'd probably still be losing money, I would think. But he loves it, it's a hobby to him. And uh, if he weren't doing this, he'd be out chasing women. So far better for him to be in the workshop. We need guys that can turn out cars to that level, love doing it, and do it all the time. It's auction day, and Derek's almost up to speed. Right, I'm uh, fine, yes, yeah, we're nearly ready now. Just been through the memorabilia, bits and pieces that lots and lots of people bring in, regulars. And when I say reserve, what's it going to make? They say, I'll leave it to you which is really nice of them, isn't it? So I have to then make a decision. What have you got there, mate? Loads of stuff. Uh, there's a Land Rover, a couple of cast plates, and some wall fillers. There it is, star of the show, lot number 261, Firestone map. Right, here we go. Where? Come on, bid on me books. Start in the hall. Where are you going to be? 
four, four I've got, 450, 500, 550, 600, 600 pound, 50, 650, 650. You want seven? 700 pounds, 700 pounds. We all know what it's worth, 700 pounds, 750. We've turned more down this week, I'm telling you, because we couldn't sell it without going in the, in the auction. Seated on my right, 750, 750. Brilliant buy, brilliant buy. Lovely bit of kit. The winners, taxi firm owners, Lisa and John Risdale. Uh, well, this one was more of a whim, to be quite honest. It was the tiger sign that we wanted, but we've got a lot of signs in our garage at home. It's a man cave type place. So we just buy the signs that we like, really. And we like this one. It's good. It's an investment, really. Also here today, regular sign buyers, Jonathan and his dad, Gordon. Lovely sign, look, beautiful sign. Whereabouts, come on. 170, 80, 180. Thanks for letting me know. 180. Lot 199, enamel sign, Texaco. Andrew's got it there, there it is. Look, nice one. 180, Jay the Bidder, 180. Sold, 180. Ah, hello there. Got my signs. The Texaco sign, which is a very nice one. And a BP Motor Spirit sign, which is a very rare Irish sign. Um, so, what's so rare about that then? Well, there weren't many made, and it's an early one, about 1930 period. We were looking for things to fill the garage walls with, and uh, it's the right place to come. We like coming here. It's a sort of a, a friendly atmosphere and a nice half a day out. And we've, we've always found that Derek to be a, a, an open and honest dealer over the few years that we've been coming. I'll clean them all, wax them all, and I like to put wax oil on the back of them to protect them from any rust. On the left of the bridge is the busy city of Hull. On the other side is Barton-upon-Humber, population 11,000. But for just one day every year, this number triples. I think it's Europe's largest single day bike meet, if I've got that right. Derek likes to get here early, before it all kicks off. Tremendous uh, foot traffic coming past later on, it'll be absolutely amazing. It's one of the premier events, I think, without a question. The organisers call it the Barton Bike Night. They bill it as a two-wheeled overdose, and they're not wrong. Basically, what it is, it's grown from, like, 20 or 30 lads who came with bikes on a Wednesday night 21, 22 years ago. We're not quite sure which now. We think we get between 20 and 25,000 people into, into Barton. And that's not including the 10,000 bikes they bring with them. On paper, Derek's here to promote the business, but it's a good excuse to talk to and meet old friends and wonder at classic bikes. This trail is worth three quarters of a million pounds. This is very, very special. It's three, uh, three Works MV Augustas, very special machines. Very rare where you see three Works MVs in, in, in one hit like that, unless it's on a race circuit. Derek's also quite taken by organiser Rob's Gilera 150 Sport, which he bought from the auction a few years ago as a wreck. We found that with this Italian stuff, if you stood it in a line of bikes, and they were all sort of fairly mundane 150cc British bike, Francis Barnett, Excelsior's, Bantam, stuff like that, then you put a couple of Italians amongst them, everyone went to the Italians. The Italian stuff is so stylish. I mean, look at the mudguard, stuff like that, you know, and the shape of the tank. It's just got something about it. And nice colours, nice colour schemes, as Rob's done this. That's how it would have been, Rob, that something like that. Colour, Reed, yeah. Yeah. Put a lot of money into racing, didn't they? And they, uh, they cleaned up very, very well. They've got the style, haven't they? It's just simple. It will be like standing a Ferrari next to an MGB. Absolutely, it's yeah. With the equipment of it yeah. Day, wouldn't it? Yeah. This bike was just one of a huge collection, originally owned by a Lancashire businessman, Dale Winfield, who died three years ago. Derek organised their sale. Oh, I feel very privileged to be able to offer the whole collection. Very, very privileged. We were very, very pleased to do it. We had a lovely working relationship with the family. They're super people, lovely, genuine people. Many of the bikes in the collection, like this one, also an MV Augusta, needed a complete renovation. But here it is today, in all its glory. Out of the 180 bikes or thereabouts we sold, most would be in that sort of condition. 
riding about and on display at shows like this. I think that's a tremendous achievement. Derek and the family have their own collection of about 60 bikes. Today, they brought a couple of historic racers. They've got tremendous racing pedigree. One there for um, Steve Crawford, as you can see. Another one, Phil Reed. Well, everyone knows Phil Reed, one of the most famous bike racers ever. So that's one of his old machines. It's obviously a great event, but probably a bit of a mixed blessing for the locals. I feel for the residents a little bit because it's a day out of their calendar. But then again, when you think how much the economy is boosted by all these people coming in just for that one day, you know, uh, it must be phenomenal, really. Derek can't delay it any longer. It's time to get rid of some of his stash of cars. To distract him, a record number of lots to get through. As one customer said this morning, it'll be all right as long as he doesn't crack all them stupid jokes. Now, I love these cars, I'm sure you all do. They're very, very strong, well-built car. The RAF used them, yeah, but they weren't very successful when they landed, were they? They, they tended to crash when they landed. The 1938 Austin 12 and the Jaguar Mark IV are ready for sale, along with another from his collection, a low-mileage 1950 Riley RME. But Derek still appears to be in two minds. It is difficult because when you're cleaning them, preparing them, go out for a run in them, stand back and look at them and think, wow, what a car, you know, I shouldn't be parting with that. But we've got a lot of this type of thing, really, I suppose, and you, you, you can't keep them all. Derek shares his affection for the Jags' grace, space and pace with similar admirers. Hollywood legend Clark Gable had one. It's style, you know, it's a real period <coughs> car, that. It's conditioned, wonderful, the interior, the bodywork, you, you wouldn't find better. It's, it's the poor man's Rolls Royce, but I love the shape. It's a really, really classic, beautiful shape car. You can see it come in. When you ride down the road, everybody sees it. It's gorgeous. Bob Stephen from Aberdeenshire wants the Jag. The story is, I saw this car being advertised about three years ago in one of the, the, the classic car magazines, and I thought it's, it's the kind of style of car I would like to have. This week, we, my wife and I came down for a few days to have a look at the car and decided we were going to buy it. Bob won't be bidding in the auction, but he's offered to meet the reserve if it fails to sell. I put in a commission bid of uh, 30,000. The Jag 1946, Jaguar Mark IV, three and a half litre, 20, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, 23,000, 24, 24, 25, 25,000, 25, 5, 25, 5, 6, 26, 26,000, provisional, got more on the books, 26,000, got more on the books. Reserve not met at auction, the car is Bob's for 30,000. I'm happy with it, yeah, very happy. We've got a dog, and if it wasn't for the dog, I'd be buying a two-seater, but he'll be in the back. So it had to be a, a family-type car. This style just fits the bill. He isn't going to get over it. He'll mention it for a few days. Then he'll probably buy something. By the end of next week, he'll have bought something else to replace it. The Riley 1.5, 1950. Lovely car, exceptional car. Where? Eight, two fifty, five. 750, 9, 250, 9, 250, 9, 5, 9, 5. On my left, 9,750. If you want 10, she's away, 9,750. Are you done? 9,750. 9,750. Sold to regular Mark Springett. One of the busiest days of the year continues with a rush on auto memorabilia. Bought a Michelin man just for Christmas. Santa's come early. What do you like about Michelin men? They remind me of my mate Bob, who's behind you. Be nice, round, and smiley and fat. That's me. Nine hundred pound. Nine hundred pound. Go and have another. Provisional only at the moment, sir. So. Sales are looking good. Lovely. Okay. Lovely. It was a bit doing business. Nice to meet right. you. 
me and Jeff upstairs, we've been flat out. And who's in charge who keeps tabs and everything? What do you think? I can't believe you actually had to ask that question. There's a showroom full of beautiful classics, but it's the Sunbeam Rapier that's now attracting a lot of the attention. How would you sort of class this sort of restoration, Rob, on this one? Oh, it looks absolutely top notch, but until you really get up and ramps, you can't tell. But first, from first uh, appearance, it looks amazing. <laughs> looks like it's had a lot of money, hell of a lot of money spent on it. Rob is a dealer, and the success of his business relies on finding quality cars like this. They don't come up that often, so you've got to, you've got to pounce while you can, you know. That's, uh, that's nice. This is a beauty. You, you never see them. Uh, 66 Sunbeam Rapier, two door, owned and entered by uh, a retired route specialist. Start me on it, where are we going to be? Where? Eight, seven, 7,000 down here, 7,000 down, 7,002, far right, 72, 74, 7,004, 74, submit in, 76, 7,006, 8, 7,800, 7,008, sound down here and submit in, 7,800, you want 8, 7,800, 80 says, 8,000, 8,000 pound, 8,1, 8,002, 8,203, 8,003. Going and away, 8,003. Are you all done? Last time looking round, 8,300 for the first, second, third and last time. 8,3. 700 less than reserve, but it's enough. Dealer Rob is the new owner, but not for long. I had to buy it. Um, it was one of those cars I, could, I couldn't sort of, I couldn't leave the auction without buying it. You know, my hand was going to stay in the air. It was one of those. Uh, I bought it and um, as I predicted, it sold very, very quickly. Making Rob a tidy profit and keeping the wheels of business turning. I love the cars, I love the people. It, it's just, it, it's, it's like a hobby. Um, it's more of a hobby than a business. It's just, it's fabulous. The other lucky dealer was Mark Springett, now back at his showroom in Northampton with his new Riley. I didn't know it was Derek's until um, afterwards, but he said, oh, that's come from my collection. And the beauty with Derek's cars is he does have some great cars in his collection. So you know if it's come from his collection, it's a good car. It's been well looked after. And Derek wouldn't have bought the car in the first instance if it wasn't what it, what it should be. Unfortunately, his loss was my gain. <laughs> As for Derek's Austin 12 with the valuable number plate, it appears he's had a change of heart. Derek sort of skipped over it quite quickly, didn't spend a lot of time trying to sell it. And uh, I've come in today and there's a, there's a big sign on it. He has a love affair with all his vehicles, he loves them all. They've all got a little place in his heart, so that's great. It shows that Derek does actually have a heart, so winner, winner. But what's happened to the Sierra Cosworth? 18.5, submitting. Owner Doug reckoned it would be an easy fix. It's something and out in the trade to sort this car out. The car's now in bits in Bradford. Specialist Ford restorer Neil Pennywood is giving it the once over. I liked the idea when we heard that it were coming down that we were going to be working on a Cosworth, because, you know, it's, sort of like, and it's an 80s guy and I'm an 80s guy, so... It's a good job he's keen. The slam panel itself, that all needs replacing. All of the inner wing is rotten, so all that needs replacing. The plastic holds mud, it holds anything that holds water, so it causes the panels to rot underneath them. The final bill could be a whopping £25,000. Hopefully, they will see that the money that they put in will come back to them and some. After placing a phone bid, the Ahmed family from Bradford are the new owners. All right, Neil. Fahil will be overseeing it. So today we've just come down to have a look at, obviously, what his price is up for and how much work and time it's going to need. The bonnet, because of all the corrosion, will take that for stripping. Fahil has owned other classics, which he only uses on special occasions. Our first car was a Rover P4, and we was getting more attention than the Lamborghinis and Ferraris. To the sills. The bottom edge is starting to rot. I know through experience that 
if that bottom edge is gone, you've got another two inch above that, which will have rotted away. They're going to strip it to bare shell and do whatever's needed. So we're going to get the full works done onto it. So hopefully when it's ready, it's going to be like it just rolled out the factory. See how it's starting to rot around edges? Just a little bit spidering up. Once again, not a bit major problem. Door off stripped, all cleaned up. Besides that, it is absolutely a 1980s Cosworth. What about money? At least five figures. The work will take four months, and then it could be worth £45,000. Well, the price isn't the issue. We just want the job doing right. So we're just looking forward to once it's done. The family plan to keep the car as an investment. So where are you going now, the bank? <laughs> I think so, yeah. As for the retro teardrop caravan, there was a lot of interest. Yeah, I think it's quite novel. And some practical problems. Can't possibly do it now, I'm afraid, sadly. <laughs> With his back and my knees. <laughs> yeah, it's rather sad. Uh, now we've got the teardrop caravan. I think it's six berth, this one, I'm not too sure. It's... I shower and toilet and everything in there, jacuzzi. Marvellous how they get it in, marvellous. Well, thousand, off we go, thousand, eleven, twelve, thirteen hundred, thirteen hundred, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen hundred, sixteen, fifty 1,500, 1,500, 16, 50 says, 1,650. On sound, selling 17, 1,700, 17, shaking his head, out the back, out on the side, 1,750, 1,750, 18, 18, 1,800. The telephone bidder wins but he won't be using it. Hello. The new owner? Evelyn. Evelyn's dad, Steve, was surprised too. First I knew about him, my dad came back from Matthewson's and he told me that he'd bought her a caravan. I thought, what's, what's this that he's bought? A caravan for me, two-year-old. I'm going to be free soon. Then he brought it home and it's brilliant. She uses it as basically a Wendy house. A tea party. I've been making watermelons, cups, and everything. I think the idea is, rather than just a Wendy house that she can play in you know, through the day, when she's a bit older and she's wanting to do things like camp out in the garden and things like that, I'll be able to do it. I love playing with my caravan. And Sarah is disappointed. I'd love to have had something like that when I was a small child, but I think my idea of making it into a gin bar was much better.